Good morning. No, let me talk, okay? Uh, good morning. This is my son, Court, here, and uh, we're going to do a very fun little devotional with you as we continue our journey through the poems of Genesis. Now, remember, Court, you didn't get to hear this, but last yesterday, um, we were looking at Genesis chapter uh, 14. And in Genesis chapter 14, there's this guy named Abraham who trusts God and he does something really cool. He, he goes and he rescues his cousin who is going through a really hard time. And after he rescues his cousin, he tithes his 10% to the king of peace, which was this cool little thing. Remember, we talked about the two kings, everyone. But then the other thing that happened was he refused a great deal of wealth from a king that offered to give him a lot of money. So he said that he didn't want the world to think that the king had made him rich. So don't do that, please. That's gross. And um, so, so that's what happened in the last one. Now, picking up immediately after that, in chapter 15, is this cool moment. Because immediately after that, after this moment where, where, um, where uh, Abraham says, um, you know, I don't want the world to think that you made me rich to the king of Sodom. Adam, Abraham turns around and uh, these thi after these things, so we don't know how long in Abraham's life, but we know that shortly afterwards, um, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision who said, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. And that's the poem right there. Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. Good poem, huh? No. Pay attention and don't court, please. I invited you to do this with me. But Abraham said, why don't you read? Do you want to try to read some of this? Can you read that? Do you see where my finger is? Uh, no. Okay, you're not going to? Okay. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring. A member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, for your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heavens and number the stars, and if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And then the Lord said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, and a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in half, and laid them half over against each other. But he did not cut the birds in half. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Sorry, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram. And behold dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. And then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in a land that is not their own and will be servants there, and they will be afflicted for 400 years. But I will bring judgment on the nation they serve, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. As for yourself, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age, and they shall come back here in the fourth generation. Uh, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenites, the Kadites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rehithim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gisharites, and the Jebusites. And that's the whole of chapter 15, but it's one, one vision that Abram has. And it's a very special one, too. So, Court, the reason I, uh, you know, Court's been learning how to, he's had, we've been selling some of his old kid toys. Yeah, and now so, I have $93. So now he has a little bit of money, and he's excited about that. $93. And Abraham, but I want you to think about what Abraham did here. So Abraham had a chance to be as wealthy as a king. And he said to the king, I don't want the money because it won't honor, it will only give you honor. People will say that you're the one who made me wealthy. And so then Abraham had this vision where he's talking to God. And Abraham some, said something there that's very important. 
Because God says, God's mirroring what the king of Sodom says. God, God says, no, Abraham, I am your great reward. So the great reward could have been wealth, but the great reward wasn't wealth. The great reward was God's love and God saying, I'm the one who will make up the difference. Uh, to which Abraham says, well, what good is wealth? I don't have any descendants. And this is a very wise moment for Abraham where we, Abraham, where we see this coming out. Because Abraham is saying, what good is wealth? I'm an old man. When I die... I'm not going to have any kids to carry on my wealth. Everything that I own is going to go to just this guy who's a servant in my house. And so that's where we see God offering a gift that only God can give. And that's a son to carry on Abram's line. In fact, he doesn't just offer a son. He offers descendants like the stars, doesn't he? So what we have is we have God showing his uh, why he's the best choice for Abram. Over and against, please don't do that, Court. Over and against the the wealth of man and the wealth of swords and the wealth of nations. So it's this uh, beautiful moment here. Then God cements all of this with a covenant in blood, which reminds us that every covenant is a precursor to the covenant that was sealed in Christ's blood, which is the covenant by which we are redeemed from our sins. You can go now. If you want to leave, you can leave. I like sunset. Just sit still. Okay. Court's having too much fun with the camera. Um, and so this is the beauty of Abraham's story for us. Now, um, for us, all of this points us to Jesus. It points us to the fact that this is the Christian call as well, that God has done for us what man cannot do. There's something, a wealth that is far greater than earthly wealth. There is a reward far greater than an earthly reward. And that like Abraham, we are just strangers in a strange land. And the Lord has brought us here only to take us to wherever we're going next. God's the one who protects us, shields us, and loves us. So, how do we pray today? Well, we can give thanks for all of those things and come to him um, seeking his mercy and his grace in the day ahead for Royal Rangers tonight and for little boys that have to go to school and for um, everything else. And very, you'll have to go to school today, yeah? Don't you? So. I mean, it's Saturday, so Sunday, so don't have to yep. go off. That's right. Let's pray. Father, we. Joe Ash. Joe Ash. Let's, let's pray now. Bow your head and close your eyes. You're going to pray. Okay. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your love for us, how you showed such great love to Abram, how you loved him with a never ending, never failing love, a love that picked him up and was patient with him when he did things that were just plain stupid. A love that would care for him, even in this next chapter, when he does do something that's incredibly stupid, you still are true to your covenant promise with him, even when he wasn't true to you. And we praise you for that, Lord. Now, Father, we pray for your wisdom for us as we go into this day. Help us to look to you as our great reward and our treasure that is without end. When... Um, we're told that there are earthly treasures that we should aspire to. Help us to remember that we're just strangers passing through. And Father, we pray as well for spiritual descendants, that uh, our children, our children's children, and those that we share the gospel with, and those that we minister to, would see and know the beauty of Christ, and that they would fall in love with him. We pray for your best for them as well. And we pray for a world that is broken and in need of mending. Father, do your mending, we pray. We pray as well for the distressing news um, that President Trump and his wife have COVID. We pray, Father, that you would heal them. It's, uh, um, it's all we can do. Let's pray that, Lord. We pray that uh, you would show mercy to them just as we pray that you would show mercy to the uh, seven. And well, I don't know how many people have it currently, but the millions in the United States and around the world who have COVID-19. Show them your mercy and heal them, and we pray for the 